Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In several recent videos, I have illustrated, made a little box type projects. This uh, acorn, the uh, hedgehog, and this spiral vase. Each of one of them had a different style of fitting, called, uh, which is called a bayonet fitting. And uh, a bayonet fitting is essentially one that engages and, and then walks with a little twist. It is used in electrical plugs, the where it needs to be secured. It is used in camera lenses to mount to the bodies, it's used in the old infantry for the bayonet to go on the rifle, that's where the name comes from. Uh, and so it's, it's a technique. Uh, I went to a club meeting last night and showed uh, a couple of these projects and one person said, well I will always hand chase threads into my project. Well, that's fine, as long as you know the trade-offs. That's a perfectly valid technique. And, Another person said, I'll never use uh, 3D printing in a project. Well, <laughs> this is using PLA, a polymer. And if you're going to strike polymers from your repertoire, you're going to take out your resin casting. You're going to take out your CA glue. Uh, you're probably going to take out all the tight bond wood glues and have to go back to hide glue. Uh, you'll take out a lot of your varnishes and in fact even tongue oil is one of my favorites as it dries it polymerizes so be careful what position you take in in these things every technique has trade-offs pluses and minuses in the end you pick one that best suits you and then let's enjoy the diversity of what we see so I have uh, based on the feedback I have gone ahead and I've set these up into my Etsy store these range from one inch to uh, three inches by quarters and then a couple of bigger ones maybe. Uh, I'll put them in three colors. I can't use wood PLA because it's just not ready for prime time, at least for me. So uh, these are PLA of different colors. A polymer, polyglactic acid, which is derived from plant starch. So it's even organic. How about that? Okay, so uh, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of what I've done with 3D printing in my wood shop. Uh, I'm not going to go into great depth, I'm just going to try and give you an overview so that if it interests you, then you find additional resources to dive in deeper. Uh, it, to me, it is fascinating and worth learning if you choose to. So, let's get on with it. One way to obtain 3D models to print is to search sharing sites. Some are free, some are fee-based. One of the largest free sites is Thingiverse. I opened Thingiverse and had it search for wood turning. This is the first page of many pages that returned. But I have to say, searching is an art form. Of course, there is an ad in the top middle, but I see a center finder, three micro lathes, two sharpening jigs, one long worth chuck, and some bracket that I do not recognize. These may or may not fit your needs. Often, when I find something interesting, I like to customize it or redraw it to my tastes. But that brings up another topic, how to create a model. One free software that I have used in the past is SketchUp. In SketchUp, one visually creates an object. Let us create a rectangular shape, a cylinder shape, and a cylinder with some area cut out. A sphere is difficult to generate. There are a lot of tools and manipulations that would take a whole training course to cover. Then with an STL add-in, a model can be exported that can be printed. Another free software that I now use the most is OpenSCAD. In OpenSCAD, everything is parameter-based. One writes instructions or parameters on the left, then the result is in the screen to the right. Let us create a rectangular shape, a cylinder, a sphere, a cone, and a box with a hole in it. Again, there is a learning curve. Then an STL format model can be exported to be printed. Fusion 360 is another parameter-based design software that charges a monthly fee. There are others in the CAD space. All of these software packages I have mentioned are more regular shape-based. Software to create figurines or sculptures is very different. And that's all that I can say about that. At this point, there are companies such as Shapeways that will print a model, of course, for a fee. Another great resource is a local makerspace or jumpstart. A makerspace is publicly available, often in a library. 
Before my printer, I used one of these. A makerspace often has multiple computers, various software, and equipment for many kinds of creative projects. Often, an attendant is a great resource. To print a model yourself, any 3D model must be sliced in order to print it. Slicers vary by the manufacturer of the 3D printer. Essentially, a slicer takes the STL model file and makes horizontal slices in G-code that the printer can understand and print. This file is then transferred to the printer. The bushing displayed will take an hour in print time and 8.21 grams. For filament, I use PLA or poly polylactic acid. Poly PLA is a plant-based, starch-based polymer. Other polymer filaments include PETG, polyethylene terephthalate glycol, and ABS or acrylonyl-nitrobutadiene styrene. Now you know why we use abbreviations. There are pluses and minuses for all filaments. My printer is a Prusa MK3S Plus. I have owned it for almost two years, but I cannot give comparisons to other printers because I do not have experience with other printers. But support has been good. It uses a heated base plate and has a good print capacity. I am happy with it. It prints the file layer by layer from the bottom up, about four thousandths over 0.15 millimeter per layer and therefore takes a long time to print. I have the printer in an enclosed space to keep the ambient temperature consistent, just in case there is a smoke detector and lighting inside. Another thing that I recently purchased and want to explore in a wood turning environment is a 3D filament printing pen. This is handheld and more of an artsy tool. More on that later as I experiment with it. Here's a sample of items I've printed, most of which I have also designed. By the way, some of you out there already do 3D printing and some of it in your wood shop. I'd like to know what projects you have used your 3D printer for uh, and, and let's explore that diversity. For those of you who have no idea what 3D printing is but now have a little overview, what came to your mind as you saw this as a project where a 3D printing portion may work for you. So let me know. Meanwhile, I'll see you next week with another wood turning video. No face shield this time. There was no flying object. So let's get on with it.